By day's end, Taliban fighters were sitting at the desk in the presidential palace. Afghanistan's army gave up without a fight. The only part of the capital, Kabul, not under Taliban control, is the airport, now the epicenter of an exodus of Western diplomats. Social media posts showed scenes of chaos as thousands of Afghans swarmed the tarmac trying to get on any flight to escape. For everyone else, there were mass lineups outside bank machines and enormous traffic jams as people headed home to await whatever tomorrow brings. Afghanistan's president began the day vowing to negotiate an orderly transfer of power, but he didn't stick around to do it, fleeing the country. He said to avoid bloodshed, though many called it cowardly. Not just for me, for the entire nation. Um, it certainly is a betrayal. I was Rangina Hamidi, who used to be his loyal education minister, now fears retribution from the Taliban. In terms of how safe we are, and how this night, if we remain until the morning, um, it's, it's very, very difficult to predict uh, if we will make it to the morning. Their properties, their lives are safe. A Taliban their spokesman attempting to demonstrate a more moderate stance to the world promised there would be no vengeance. But given the ruthlessness of their rule two decades ago, few seem prepared to believe it now. It's been a catastrophic miscalculation that is absolutely clear. The UK and the United States both overestimated the capacity of the Afghan government to hold off the, the Taliban. We the US the Secretary of State insisted waiting longer to pull out US forces would not have changed today's invested. outcome. Uh, the international community invested over 20 years, billions of dollars in these forces, 300,000 of them. The dizzying speed of the Taliban victory poses the immediate challenge of how to deal with the new regime. I think the engagement with the West would be important in tempering, tempering Taliban's own uh, these hardline policies, those human rights policies, which have made them an anathema to the West. Tonight, Britain's Boris Johnson said the priority now must be to ensure that Afghanistan does not become what he called a breeding ground for terror once again. Chris Brown, CBC News, London.